Hello all, I am Dr. J. Pavitra, Associate Professor, Department of Management Studies, School of Management and Commerce, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. In this video, we are going to be discussing on the concept of cost accounting. So, the, in this video, we are discussing on the meaning of the cost accounting, the various definitions of the cost accounting, the scope of the cost accounting, the cost accounting and the financial accounting, the cost accounting, management accounting, various objectives of cost accounting, functions of cost accounting, essentials of cost accounting, role of cost accounting, advantages and disadvantages, what is meant by this cost center and the profit center, the various types of cost, techniques of cost, various classification of the cost, methods of the cost and the cost sheet. Let us first move on to the meaning. We should know about the cost before proceeding towards the cost accounting. So the cost is the amount of resource given up in the exchange for goods and services. Whatever we are exchanging for the goods and services that are going to be taken and the money is going to be given. The resources given up are money and money's equivalent expressed in monetary units. All the items, whether it is a manufacturing product or the service that is being rendered, is being expressed only in the monetary terms. Now, we shall see about what is this cost accounting. Cost accounting is concerned with the recording, classifying and summarizing cost for determination of cost of products or services planning, controlling and reducing various costs and furnishing of information to the management for decision making. The cost is going to be always going to be recorded and classified and also going to be summarized relating to the cost matters and of products or services and which will be helpful in bringing the planning, controlling and then reducing the various costs and furnishing the cost information so that the management is being able to give a proper decision. In this Indian con context, we are having the cost accounting. Increased awareness of the cost consciousness is being taken by the Indian scenario. Industrialists are always in the overview of ascertainment of the cost and accurately for each and every products. And in this competition world, the manufacturers are going to be giving the fixation of the price at the least level so that they are being attracted towards the customers. The various economic changes of the policies of the government also laying the important emphasis towards the proper targets that has to be achieved and also reducing the cost so that they are being targeted to the Indian industrialist. The increased government control over the pricing has made the manufacturers to give utmost importance towards installation of the cost accounting concepts. The definition of the cost accountancy as the application of cost and cost accounting principles, method and techniques to the science, art and practice of the cost control and the ascertainment of the profitability. The application of the various costing techniques are available and also the costing principles has to be followed. The methods and the techniques which are being applied towards various science and art and also bringing the practice towards enhancing the quality on, of the cost control and bringing towards the profitability. Various scope of the cost accounting are there. The scope are being broadly diversified such as the costing, cost accounting, cost control techniques, budgeting and cost audit. The first one we are seeking towards the costing. The various process and the various techniques that are needed towards the ascertainment of the cost. The cost accounting is one of the branch of the accounting. Apart from all, we have the financial and the management accounting which is dealing with the classification, recording and allocation and bringing the various important reports towards comparison of the current and the future cost. 
the cost control techniques is also going to be bringing the control for the organization by guidance and the regulation for the executive action for cooperating in an undertaking next is this budgeting so budgeting is bringing the overall group blueprint and comprehensive plan of the operations and actions which are being expressed for the financial terms and we have this cost audit any corrections that is being necessary that has to be made and then the cost accountants of the adherence to the accounting plan are being made in the cost audit the nature of cost accounting is a, as such the cost accounting is a separate branch of knowledge which is bringing towards the ascertainment of the cost the cost accounting is a science the cost accounting is an art and the cost accounting is a profession as well next we have to see about what is the relationship between this financial accounting and the cost accounting various similarities are such as these double entry principles are being followed both in the financial accounting and also the cost accounting here they have the both transactions in which the invoices are being raised and the vouchers also going to be constituting the common basis for recording the transaction in both the cost and the financial accounting and here we are saying about the third similarity the results are going to be revealed in order for the both the systems and the cost for the losses and the wastage are also going to be provided both in the financial and also the cost accounting various differences are also there for the financial and the cost accounting the financial accounting it is the purpose is external reporting so the external users are highly important such as the owners creditors and the government whereas in the cost accounting they are only bringing towards the internal reporting for the management of the business in this financial accounting it is going to be failing to give a guidance about the formulation of the pricing policies but however in this cost accounting they are giving adequate data so that they are able to bring the cost pricing policies and here the data is not sufficient to evaluate the efficiency of the business and here in this cost accounting they are furnishing the cost data at a frequent intervals maybe a fortnightly or weekly data are being furnished and it also helps in evaluating the business efficiency of the business next going to the next branch which is the management accounting so various differences are there in this cost accounting towards the management accounting so the cost accounting has been evolved way back from the 14th century however in the management accounting they have started only in the recent times from the middle 20th century the objective of the cost accounting to control and ascertain the cost whereas in the management accounting they are going to be providing the important useful information so as to make decisions in the cost accounting they are bringing the narrow scope however in the management accounting they are in the wider scope and here in this cost accounting they are needed for the both the internal and external parties and however in this management accounting there is only for the need of the management internal management and the next difference is the dealing in the monetary transactions in the cost accounting whereas in the management accounting they are dealing both with the monetary and also the non monetary transaction next is the objectives of the cost accounting the first objective is going to be ascertainment of the cost so we have to know what are the various cost that are going to be affecting for the business next important purpose is going to be the control of the cost where we have to give the control the over cost should not be having and the next objective is going to be determination of selling price so the fixation of the price to be sold in the market that is the need for the cost accounting and frequent preparation of the reports and other various reports are necessary for ascertainment of the cost and to provide a basis for the operating policies
Next, we have this functions of cost accountant. So, the various functions in the cost accountant, they are having the two traditional method and also the modern method for following the rules and regulations for a cost accountant. So, the essentials of the cost accountant is going to be that of the accuracy, the proper correct information relating to the cost has to be disclosed. And then simplicity, it is to be simple and easy to understand. Elasticity, based on the demand and the consumption of the product, the cost has to be changed. And next we have the economical changes, comparability, promptness, periodical preparation of the reports, reconciliation with the financial accounts. So the three branches of accounting are not separate, but however they are going to be interrelated. And this cost accounting, any bank reconciliations has to be taken towards the financial accounting and has to be therefore sorted out. And uniformity, a uniform principle has to be followed and equal cost weightage has to be given. Various advantages of the cost accounting are there. The first advantage is it is bringing the benefits for the management so that they are able to give the control of the cost and also bring the futuristic cost and historical cost and various other costs can be highlighted. The benefits for the employees to know how their performance of the business is going and whether they are able to get the bonus and also bring the benefit towards the cost. And benefits to the creditors. So when they are able to know about the current position of the business relating to the cost, they are able to supply for the raw materials and the benefits to the government which they are going to be taking the feasibility about the various changes that are happening in the business and the benefits to the consumer and also to the public. Various limitations of the cost are there such as the limitation is very highly expensive to determine the cost. Here the cost accounting system various techniques are available but however they are going to be very difficult in ascertaining the cost. Next we have the inapplicability of bringing the same costing method and technique and it is not suitable for the small scale units and lack of accuracy and it is lacking the social accounting. Next we have the role of cost in the cost accounting. So the important role is going to be bringing the choosing the various alternatives from the course of actions. And it helps in various pricing decisions to be taken place. And it helps in the matter relating to the replacement of the capital equipment. And it is useful in de deciding the acquisition of the fixed assets. It helps in deciding whether an asset to be bought or sold. Next, the cost unit and the cost center. The cost unit is going to be quantitative unit per product or service in relation in which the costs are going to be ascertained. Whereas the cost center is going to be the location or the person or the item or the equipment in the respect of which the cost has to be ascertained and the related units are also to be ascertained. So next we are having the various types of cost center. We have the personal and impersonal cost center. The second operation process cost center. The third is production service cost center. The various techniques are also available such as the absorption costing, marginal costing, historical costing, standard costing, differential costing, uniform costing. All these techniques are separately uh, there as a in this cost accounting technique. The various cost system is also available such as estimating the cost, historical cost system and the standard cost system. The various methods are also there such as already discussed about the techniques. When discussing about the methods, we have the specific order and the operational costing. In the specific order, we are having the job costing, batch costing, contract costing, and the cost plus costing. Per job, what is the cost that has to be recovered? 
and the batch per batch what is the work that has been done for that the cost should be ascertained the contract basis and then the cost plus cost costing has to be determined in the operational costing we have the various costing techniques methods such as the output costing process costing service costing and composite cost we need to know about the various classification of the cost so what is the need of this cost classification so various types of cost are there so that we are able to ascertain about the profits in a periodical manner and preparing the budgets and planning the process and controlling the cost is also highly essential and bringing the pricing policies and also it is helping the current applications of the plans and the policies so the first classification of the cost is on the basis of elements of the cost so we have the four elements of the cost such as the material cost the raw material cost or the working process cost and the finished goods cost the material that is going to be taken place the labor cost the labor that is to be charged that has to be taken as the labor cost we have the direct expenses the factory expenses and other related direct expenses and we have the overheads next on the basis of the functional service we are going to be having the production cost administration cost then selling cost distribution cost financial cost research and development cost next on the basis of controllability we are having the fixed cost variable cost and the semi variable cost the fixed cost is not going to be changed it is remaining constant however the variable cost is going to be changed based on the conditions of the business sometimes the partly of the fixed and partly of the variable is being termed as the semi variable cost on the basis of normality we have the normal cost and abnormal cost based on the normal situation in the business they are stating about the normal cost and also the abnormal situation they are being preparing the abnormal cost on the basis of the identify ability we have the direct cost and the indirect cost so the direct cost that is being taken place for the business and the indirect cost that is going to be indirectly supported for the business on the basis of investment we are having the capital cost and the revenue cost next on the basis of time we have the historical cost the past data and the past cost are needed and the predetermined the futuristic cost are going to be predetermined on the basis of association with the product so we have the product cost and the period cost so the particular product the product cost and the periodicity and the time frame and the cost that has to be incurred for a period of time on the basis of decision making we have the various types of cost such as the sling cost out of pocket cost opportunity cost inputted cost marginal cost replacement cost avoidable and unavoidable cost differential cost relevant and irrelevant cost conversion cost see here all these costs are needed for the decision making purpose sometimes out of the pocket they have to contribute so that they have to run the business in inputted cost the input of the materials so marginal cost based on the sales so the profit volume has to be calculated and the replacement the cost of replacement for the machines and the equipments some cost can be avoided and some cost cannot be unavoided so they have to be classified based on the avoidable situations and unavoidable situation the differential cost so the difference between the fixed and the variable cost so the relevant what are the relevant cost that is going to be incurred and the irrelevant cost the conversion between the raw material and the completion of the finished goods what is the cost that has to be incurred so for calculating the total cost we are terming the term of the cost such as the prime cost which is to be calculated where they are stating about how to calculate this prime cost is direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus direct expenses and next we are stating about the factory cost 
or the works cost in which they are going to be calculating about the factory cost is going to be calculated from the prime cost plus the factory overhead and then after they are arriving for the office cost or the cost of production which is being calculated from the factory cost plus office and administration overhead the total cost or the cost of sales can be arrived at calculating the office cost plus selling overhead with this elements of the cost the production of the goods and services are going to be giving the important factors such as the raw material the labor and the machines and the equipment that are going to be engaged in the production activities so that they are being made to pay for the different expenses so here the total cost is going to be giving the different payments for the goods and services that are going to be necessary for the production of the commodity and then we are having the various different parts of the cost that are going to be elements so here we can say that the material cost the labor cost and other expenses all the labor material and the other expenses have the various direct and the indirect cost that has to be led and then after they are taking the overheads such as the factory overheads the administration selling and the distribution overheads what is this direct materials the direct materials which is going to be identified as the product and can be conveniently measured for the directly chargement of the product so the directly raw materials that are entering for the production process the raw materials that are being purchased for the specific products and being produced next we have the direct labor who are the labor that are going to be engaged for the composition altering construction confirmation and condition of the product and the labor is going to be properly identified and attributed for the particular job that is going to be taken place and then they are going to be giving the conversion of the raw materials into the finished goods here the wages are going to be paid as the direct wages so the labor is going to be engaged in the production or the operation or the process that is going to be engaged in aiding for the manufacturing or the supervision or the maintenance or the transportation or the inspections of the production activities next in this direct labor they will not be including the wages paid to the inspectors or the supervisors or not treated as direct as if they are going to be treated as direct specific process and the time spent are going to be conveniently has to be identified and if the amount is insignificant like the wages of trainees apprentices through directly spent are going to be considered as indirect next coming to the overheads what is the meaning of the overheads the overhead is the aggregate of the cost of indirect materials indirect labor and other expenses which are going to be included service as cannot conveniently be charged directly to the specific cost all the expenses other than the direct expenses are considered to be the overheads which is including the expenses in relating to the general connection of the organization or a whole part or cost of production of the supplies of the products here the classification of the overheads are going to be made towards the manufacturing administration selling and the distribution first we have to know about what is the manufacturing overhead so it is the indirect expense so that they are going to be charging for the overall manufacturing division of the concern so that they are able to make the indirect expenditures incurred for the business from the receipt of the order until the completion of the goods all the expenses of the manufacturing are going to be incurred in this manufacturing overheads or the work overhead such as the depreciation insurance maintenance of plant and machinery works buildings and equipment stores consumable repairs maintenance of rent rates and taxes on works postage and stationery and other similar expenses relating to the factory and then factory wages indirect materials which are related to the factory overheads next coming to the administration overhead 
all the indirect expenses incurred in the formulation of the policies relating to the controlling and the management of the organization in which they are being related to the research and development or selling activities here they are including all the expenses that are going to be direct control for the administration purpose such as the salaries rent rates insurance power repairs and maintenance insurance etc which are related to the office administration next is the selling overheads it is the cost which is going to be seeking towards the creation of the demand and bringing the secured orders soliciting for the recurring orders of the articles which are going to be given to the customers here the all the selling expenses are going to be incurred in this selling overheads such as the sales office expenses salary commission and other related expenses such as the advertisement expenses fancy packaging customer free samples distribution of free samples sales service expenses and demonstration and technical advice are being taken as the selling overhead next coming to the distribution overhead it is the expenditure which is being incurred in the process which is bringing the packet of the material which is going to be ready for the dispatch and ended with the reconditioned return of empty package here all the expenses relating to the distribution of the product are going to be under this distribution overhead such as the warehouse rent salaries insurance rent rates and taxes for the godowns or the warehouse are covered under the distribution overhead next we shall see what is this cost sheet cost sheet is an analytical statement which is bringing the all the production expenses and bringing the total cost per unit and the quantity of the production the definition given according to the weld map which is stating about the cost sheet are prepared to the use of management and consequently they must include all the essential details which will assist the manager in checking the efficiency of the production so here the cost sheet is going to be prepared which is bringing the statement so that all the essential cost that are being incurred are given here as easily identified in this cost sheet what are the advantages of the cost sheet it is discloses the total cost and also the per unit cost for the production of the product during the given period the, it enables the manufacturer to keep the close watch and control of the cost of production it helps to conduct the comparative study of the current and the previous cost and also the actual and the predetermined of the standard cost it helps the manufacturer to frame the following suitable production policies it helps in fixation of the selling price and it helps in minimizing the cost of production it helps to submit the quotation on the whole the cost sheet is bringing you the overview of the various cost which is helping in the various stages for running of the business this is the format of the cost sheet which has to be prepared and this is a statement that has to be prepared first down the line they are stating from the direct material direct labor and the direct expenses are total and which is called as the prime cost from the prime cost they are adding the works overheads or the factory overheads all the expenses relating to the factory overheads are being written down here then after they are taking the adding the works overhead they are taking the total as the works cost or the factory cost then after adding the administration overheads all the office overheads or the administration expenses are going to be incurred here then after we take the cost of production the cost from the cost of production they are adding the selling and also the distribution overheads the expenses relating to the selling and distribution overheads are being given in detail from this we are able to give the total cost or the cost of sales from the sales given to the total cost we get whether it is a profit or loss we are we are able to state from the given cost that is being incurred we are able to state whether the cost is going to be of profit or loss this is the form of the cost sheet in which the prime cost we are adding the direct material direct labor and the direct expenses 
the works factory cost is going to be taken by adding the prime cost plus the works or the factory overheads. Cost of production is going to be arrived from the works cost plus the administration overheads. Total cost or the cost of sales is going to be incurred from the cost of production plus the selling and distribution overhead. The profit is going to be arrived by sales minus the cost of sales. On the whole, these are the important concepts of the cost accounting where the various costs are and the various techniques of the cost accounting is involved. The cost sheet is giving you the big summary of the various types of costs that are going to be incurred which is helpful for the business to control the cost. With this, I thank the Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research for giving me the opportunity. Thank you all.